Hey guys, so it's Makeup Monday and today I'm doing a video that has actually been requested a couple of times and it was brought to my attention that some of you would like to know a little bit about makeup brushes as in which ones you use for what and how to look after them, clean them, that kind of thing. So that's what I'm going to be showing you today and um, the brushes I'm going to show you are actually sort of standard price, they're average brushes, I'm not going to mention any names or prices because the idea behind this one was that it can be for anybody, you don't have to be a professional makeup artist to have nice brushes and you know for those of you out there who don't really want to spend the money on them then this is just going to show you the type of brush that you use um, and you know most of you will have makeup brushes already at home and sometimes you get them in gift packs at Christmas, all those kind of things so this is basically going to show you how you would use those brushes um, rather than the high end ones. Um, so hopefully this video will be helpful and first brushes that I'm going to start off with are um, I'm going to do it in the routine way that I would do my makeup so this may or may not sen make sense to some people but the first brush that I tend to use is a concealer brush and you know conceal under the eyes or any blemishes that kind of thing and the one that I use is actually a really tiny one which is a double ended one there if you can see um, and I literally use this for application only, just to get it out of the pot and pop it on the area I need. I then would use my fingers to blend the product in. So I would tend to put on like a thicker concealer first with this one, pop on my foundation and then pop on a highlighting concealer on top. Um, so that's what I would use that one for, so it's really quite small. Um, and then my next one would be a foundation brush. Now I have got a flat foundation brush, which needs a good clean. Um, I do like this one but I do tend to find that when you wipe it on the skin it tends to leave sort of like marks, like pink marks, so I would prefer to have like a flat ended brush so that you could almost circular or like stipple it into the skin, so I will be changing to that one but this is the, the a basic kind of foundation brush that you have here. And the idea is that you would, you know, either pump your foundation onto the back of your hand and then literally cover the face. Um, with this one, like I said, because you do get the sort of paint strokes, I guess, um, you would still have to then just blend it in with the hand, but, you know, it's personal preference with that one. So then, the next things I would do would be, um, I would actually seal my foundation in with my powder, and for this I would use a big powder brush. It's nice and fluffy, as you can see. Um, and the thing with this is that you can get a good coverage without too much product, so um, some people use the, I think it's kabuki brushes, they're like the small, like little, like a, almost like a doorknob, um, and those are really good too. And the idea is that it's just very sort of soft to the skin, and that way you're not going to get a real full on cake of powder onto the skin. Um, so always choose one that's nice and soft. And then I would pop on some bronzer, especially this time of year, and for that I would use the same kind of brush, but like a little bit smaller. And with any, when applying any powder, bronzer, blusher, that kind of thing, I would always swirl it into the product, tap it off the excess, and then go onto the skin. And remember, with things like bronzer, always build up, because um, you can't take it off very easily. So that's the kind of brush there. So a bit like your powder brush, but a little bit smaller. And then my final part of powdering would be my blusher. And for this one, I use a slanted blusher brush. Now this one's really good, because then when you go onto the cheeks, you sort of can contour where you want to pop your blusher line in and also it's still quite a fluffy brush quite full um, so that gives you a good way of sort of getting a nice circular movement in there too um, you could use one similar to the ones we've just looked at there like the powder brushes um, but just make sure it's quite a nice full brush I just prefer the slant because of um, like I said contouring is always good with a slanted one. So that would be pretty much my face done and then if I'm going to pop any eye shadows on I have a little selection of brushes. Now I have four basic brushes which you can see there and um, as like a makeup artist I have quite a few eye brushes but I think if you're just using the brushes for everyday makeup you don't need loads so I'm just going to show you four and the first one would be the biggest one. Now this is what you would use to do say like the full coverage over the whole of the eyelid and as you can see it's quite again quite a fluffy one quite a full brush 
and this one like I said you'd get the colour your base colour you'd pop it over the whole of the eyelid so that is what you would use that one for then would come in like the same kind of brush but slightly smaller and for this this is where you would add in your I don't know for instance if you were doing a smoky eye this is where you would add in say your next darkest colour so you have a bit more precision because it's smaller you could go in with the V or you could start adding into the crease or taking it underneath that kind of thing so that's what this one would be and like I said still quite a full brush but it's smaller than the other one then the next one would be a like a sponge applicator brush and this one is really good because this allows you to like pack the colour on so if you're using really pigmented eyeshadows that kind of thing then you can get the colour on and literally press it on um, and it will just hold the shadow in place so that one's really good for that and then this one's really cute and small it's a slanted eyeshadow brush here and this is a little bit for shading but also it's good for if you're using powder um, to create an eyeliner effect then it because of the angle you can really get in to sort of the lashes go along you can create a really nice line with those so that would be one I would use for I guess shading and lining I guess maybe so um, those would be your four eyeshadow or eye brushes and um, you know like I said they're not particularly any brand or um, you know of a certain price they're just average makeup brushes and the majority of people would tend to have those so that those are ones you can use you know for all all eyeshadow techniques and then finally and this is not a must but I always think it's good to have one just in case a lip brush and this is just a really thin fine brush which you can pick up your lip pigment and just literally get a little bit more precision I guess than applying directly from your lipstick applicator now, if you hadn't noticed, some of my brushes need a good clean and I was just about to do that this morning when I remembered that actually I could do the video before I do the clean because otherwise they'd be wet. So the next step for cleaning would be, I have two things. One of them is my MAC um, brush cleanser and this one is really, really good for sort of you know, day-to-day -day cleaning. So when you've used the brushes, what I would do is pop that on a little bit of cotton wool and literally swirl the brush into the cleaner. And that will just basically take off any makeup you've put on it just on that day. So it was a temporary clean. But for when you want to do your deep clean of your brushes, um, obviously for me, I would do it more often if I'm working um, because obviously it's going on a lot of people's skin. So I would tend to do a deep clean of my brushes, you know, after each... I don't know, makeup session, so a wedding session, that kind of thing. But for you, I'd say every couple of weeks, once a month at least, is always good because you don't want the bacteria and makeup build up in there. And for that, I would normally use a baby shampoo. Um, the one I've got, I guess the most known one is Johnson's Baby Shampoo. And with this, a really, really small amount, you can see I hardly have used any and I've had this for ages. Um, literally dampen the brushes down, pop a little bit of baby shampoo in, rub through this one like rub through so that you're getting it all you know stipple it in make sure it's in there then rinse them make sure you get all the soap out of them and then I tend to just put mine on top of um, a radiator obviously m make sure it's not too hot you don't want any um, burns or melting going on um, and then that will clean them just always make sure that they're fully dry before you use them again otherwise your makeup won't apply properly and that kind of thing so that's a really really quick brief description of everything I didn't want to make this a long rambling video so I'm going to pop a Makeup Monday post on my blog um, which is ooprettyblogspot.com. so if you take a look at that I'll put the link down in the information bar and you can have a look at it all in more details and there'll be better photos and things on there for you to see so I hope that this has been helpful for those of you who did request it and um, if you have any questions at all makeup related or makeup brush related or anything related then do get in touch um you can follow me on twitter and you can follow me on facebook again the links are below and um hopefully i can help so i hope you all have a great makeup monday and i'll see you all soon bye